Okay, everyone, I was kind of given a little bit of a challenge or found a challenge from a comment in the Photoshop and Lightroom group today. Um, so I wanted to show kind of how I would approach doing this effect. There's probably three or four other ways to do it and might be a better way to do it, but this is how it worked for me uh, to get a etched embossed text effect into somebody's skin. Now, the positioning of the letters and everything else is all kinds of a creative decision. Maybe this little arch over the nose isn't the best way to do it, whatever, but um, a couple different things went into this, so we're going to dive into it. That's the text. Um, I've got a dodge and burn layer that just kind of helps enhance the coloring, and then some other uh, little effects on the eyes as well, but this is a little bit of a coloring effect to, you know, if somebody stamped letters into your skin, I can imagine it would be a little kind of red and inflamed looking, so I wanted that effect there. Um, and then these are just a dodge and burn kind of layer to enhance the eyes a bit. So, let's get started. One of the effects that we're going to be doing in this is a displacement filter. Um, and that requires a black and white Photoshop document copy of this image. So to do that, I'm going to start with the black and white filter and then just save as a Photoshop file. I've already done this, but whatever. Um, and then you can just turn that layer off. You can delete it if you want to, um, up to you. Now, the tricky part in this is getting the text to follow the form or whatever it is that you're putting the text into. Um, the way I went about doing this was to use the freeform pen tool and just draw a path for the text to follow. Now, there's a couple little things to keep in mind when you do something like this. You wanna make sure that this drop down up here is set to path and not shape. Because if you create a little arch here, it will automatically close it off and create a shape rather than just the line of the path of the text that you want to follow with your text. So I'm just going to draw a little arch over her eye and then another one over the nose and another one over this eye. So pretty straightforward and simple. Now, if your path is a little jagged or not quite straight, there's you can try redrawing it. You can also come in here to the direct selection tool and just kind of move these points around until you get the path to be smooth or whatever you're happy with. Okay, once you have that, I am going to create text. And this can get a little bit tricky to um, get it to fit to that path, but basically as you come and hover over the path, you'll notice the little square outline around the text tool disappears and it it might be hard to see on the screen recording, but there's this little line that goes through that sort of double bracket icon that is the text icon. So you want to make sure that changes so that you're attaching the text to that path. So you just click and you'll notice it kind of gets a little bit offset. Um, and I'll show you how to work with that here in a little bit, but this was your So, it's not sitting correctly on that path. What you want to use is this path selection tool. And when you come in here again, you'll notice the text tool icon shows up and it's got this little right hand arrow. That's showing you where the start point of that text is going to begin and you can slide it back and forth along that path. Similarly, you can come to the end and you'll notice you can kind of drag that. And if you come below the path, it flips it over, that kind of thing. So just tinker around with that until you get and what you want. Um, 
Now, for the rest of the text, um, the path disappeared for the moment. Uh, so you can come over to your paths and click back on the work path to where that will show up. So we'll come over here, make sure we get that little funny icon and type in eyes. And then back over here to get open. All right. So that's a pretty decent start. Now, a couple other things you can do with this, like this word here, your, if you select that and come to your uh, character window, if you don't have that up here in windows, characters right there, turn that on. You can adjust the spacing between the letters with this slider here. You can either type in a value or just click where it says VA here and then drag it left or right. So like, for instance, I want to kind of bring it about there and now it's not centered. So I'm going to come back to this tool and come in here. Not like that. And just push that back to where I think it looks good. Okay, now more fun. Um, we want to create an emboss type layer style for each of these layers. So if you double click in this gray area, uh, area of the layer, it'll bring up the layer style menu. You can also get there from layer, layer styles, and you can just click the bevel and emboss right there if you want to. But in the settings for this, you can see it's already got the effect I guess set up on my test sample of this. But I went with an outer bevel uh, set to the, the chisel soft technique. Now this has a couple different settings and just pick what you want with the chisel hard. It's not bad, but I noticed depending on the font you're using, you can get some really jaggedy kind of edges to the effect. So I liked how chisel and actually on this font chisel soft is giving me more jaggedy edges go with smooth play with it see what you like on the font that you're using and how deep you want it you know the sliders can change you know, <laughs> how it looks inside of the uh, skin and everything there um, the sliders down here affect how bright or intense the highlights and shadows are and then you also have your your lighting and you want to make sure this global lighting checkbox is on so you can change where the apparent lighting is is coming from now it's a little bit inverted because it's looking like you're stamping something into the skin so this image that I'm working with sort of has these windows, so the light's more or less coming across from the right side of the image. So I wanted the highlights and shadows to reflect that. So I went with something about there as far as the location. If you bring this all the way to the edge, it kind of looks a little too flat. So I like to have that little control point to be somewhat inside of the circle. And then just you know, say, okay, we're happy with that. One more thing with this, I don't want the actual black text. And this is one of the main things that people get confused with, with opacity and fill on layers in that they do the same thing on regular layers. But when it comes to a text layer or other layer that has a layer style effect, the fill layer or fill amount, if you turn that down, removes the original text, but leaves the text layer effect. So we want to make sure we do that as well. Okay. So really then it becomes, okay, I want to apply the same thing to each of the other layers, bevel and emboss. Just click okay. Cause the settings are already there and bring down the fill, go to the open text, double click, select bevel and emboss down the fill okay now 
Next, the displacement filter. And what that is going to do is kind of help conform the individual layer and, and bits and pieces of these uh, text elements to the texture and surface of the skin. And that is under Filter, Distort, Displace. Now, with a text, you have to rasterize or convert to smart object. Uh, I'm, it's up to you whether you want to use it as a smart object so you can go back to edit things after the fact. I'm just going to go ahead and rasterize it. Um, typically, this is defaulting at 10 and 10 on the horizontal and vertical scale. And that's fine. Um, just click OK. Now, you want to go find that black and white Photoshop document that you saved. Uh, and select that for this displacement map. And you can see that was a really pretty subtle shift. But what it did was where there's these little, you know, bits of texture in the skin. So if I undo that, you can see it helps form those to those bits of texture. Um, so then you can just go filter displace and it will automatically do that step for the remaining layers. Okay. So that's the majority of creating the foundation of that effect. The rest of it was dodging and burning and some other little, uh, color enhancements. So basically I'm just going to select those in control or command on a Mac control G. Um, to group them together. So now they're all in one simple folder there. Um, for dodging and burning, I typically use curves adjustment layers. I've actually set up uh, an action set that does that automatically for me. Um, but to show you what they are is this is just a curve layer set to bring the exposure down. And then I masked it with black, so you don't see that effect until I paint with a white paintbrush. And really, all I'm going to do with this, I'm going to run at about 5% opacity. Just come in here and kind of darken down the inside bits of these letters. Just a little bit. I don't want to go too crazy with this, but just to give it a little more apparent depth. And I'm also going to kind of help create this look that maybe the outer bit of the skin is maybe swollen or whatever. So I keep it subtle and then dodge basically does the same thing except it you know brings up a highlight there so just to make it look like there's some movement in the surface of the skin because of these letters being pressed into their skin which is lovely right that's a pleasant thought okay so i'm just going to go through and do this real quick to give you kind of an idea of how that effect will look. Okay. So, now if I turn that on and off, you can just kind of see That just looks a little more like it has actually put some depth into the skin there. Um, I think I might actually just reduce the opacity of that a little bit. I think the highlight setting on my uh, emboss effect might have been a little too intense. I'm not super thrilled with how bright those highlights are on the on the lettering, but whatever. Good enough. Um, the next thing I did was to create that red kind of, you know, irritated skin look. I just created a new layer and set the blend mode to overlay. 
and then just pick this kind of deep maroon brown color and again same thing around five maybe ten percent on the opacity I'm just going to kind of paint in a little bit around each of the letters inside the letter just a little bit of subtle skin irritation look there because that hurts having letters stuck in your skin and you know all this kind of effect is up to you how detailed and how crazy you want to go with it I didn't I don't see a need to go too far with painting that kind of effect in there um, same kind of thing the the highlighting and shading on the eyes that I did was um, for the highlights I use overlay as well and just paint with white now you Technically, you can do that on the other layer that you already did with the red, but I like to keep them separate just in case I want to go back and change the opacity on any of this stuff. But I just like to come in here on the whites of the eyes and in these highlights from the windows and then on the iris just opposite of that to create a little bit of a highlight there. And again, I'm only at about 10% opacity on the paintbrush doing this. Okay, so that just adds a little bit more of a pop to the eyes. And then if it's too much, you know, bring the opacity down. Um, and then for some shading, I'm going to set this to multiply and then just switch to black on the brush and do the exact same thing, but in the shadows of the eyes. And probably take my brush opacity down to about 4% because that multiply effect can add on there really fast so I always try to keep this kind of thing subtle and then just build up the effect with a bunch of different brush strokes to create what I want Okay, so that is pretty much the entire process. So from that to that. So I hope that kind of gives you some ideas to play with. Now, like I said, there's probably a few other ways you can do this. You could actually type individual layers to get it to really conform to, say, somebody's lips like was in the example. Um, some of that they may have actually gone in and, and hand drawn some of the layers. I'm not a hundred percent certain how, the, how different people might go around, you know, bringing these effects into specific areas of images, but there's a lot of possibilities. And, um, this is just one kind of cool way to approach doing it. That is not terribly difficult. Um, if you have any more interest in, in learning more, make sure to subscribe, of course, uh, and check out the Patreon we have for the Photographer's Lair. Um, I'm posting tutorials about different types of editing topics every week, um, so a lot of information available in, in there. So, thanks for watching.